Um, so we are attempting something that was meant not to be so public, but we're going to try and see if it works. Um, we have no proof of that yet. It's just a proof of concept and see if that's work. So the idea here is that to combine two very good uh, on my, uh, my part technologies, which are Volt and uh, WireGuard, just a super brief introduction about the both. It's, uh, so Volt is um, a secret management si system, which is basically an octopus of connections uh, of authentication. So you can connect, authenticate different uh, provider, either user, uh, humans, uh, or machines. So either, either your, um, your developers or your SREs or your uh, ops people or support people, but also your machines or containers running your infrastructure can authenticate against Vault. Um, and then it does um, authorization through policies. Um, so a policy may look like something like this, uh, where you have a Vault is usually basically a, a path driven uh, API. So basically everything can be defined through a, through a path, through an API uh, path, and you can see which uh, basically Rust APIs can be, um, can be done by your uh, users against it. Um, we're going to create basically a, a plugin system, um, which is something that it's something new. Everything is uh, basically it's a, a Go plugin, uh, just by like which communicates with the backend through a gRPC interface. Uh, what it what actually happens is that is when the um, uh, when Vault comes up comes online and you define a plugin, just basically Vaults will spin up that plugin that that binary and connect to it to gRPC. Um, and there's not much to say. It's very there is a lot of bootstrap code to write a plugin for for Vault. Yeah. But that's the good thing is that we, we we really like to to write some bootstrap code because we let Vault take care of all of the very complex stuff. Um, so the, the the basic things when you build a plugin that you want to offload to Vault are are so you're going to generate secrets. So how are these secrets going to be encrypted? The rest because I want to I want this to be very, very uh, well encrypted. And I don't want to do that. I have no idea how to do that. And I don't, I should not be in charge of doing that. So we let that, uh, we let Vault do that. Um, and also we want to Vault to also manage all of the expiration and rotation of, of the secrets that we're going to generate. Uh, and that's a very important thing because I, I'm not good at it. I should not be good at it, and everybody that wants to write a plugin should not be in charge of it. The plugin is basically just the interface to what your backend is. Uh, some examples of um, backends are uh, something like this. So there is like a, a cloud provider backends where you want to generate credentials for the, your cloud provider on the spot. And the same thing we basically want to do for WireGuard. So we want to generate um, on the spot um, credentials uh, for WireGuard. And um, what is actually WireGuard? Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, a, a, it's a VPN. It's a very, it's a layer three VPN. Uh, it's a, let's say new um, era VPN, which was uh, created by, uh, I can't remember. I can't yeah. remember the name. <laughs> there is. Let's see if it is. Uh, uh, it's Jason. Yeah, it's it's Jason. Jason something. Jason something. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, it basically makes every every connection. It creates an overlay over UDP and um, creates an interface on your system. That's basically. I'm not a networking expert. I should not be in charge of explaining how a VPN works. And you should not listen to me when I explain that. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I really care is that how do I configure that? Because that's a very uh, hard problem in the industry uh, where it's very hard to configure a VPN right. It's always easy to do a ptget install open access open VPN or uh, install some other VPNs. The, the hard part is to how do I configure that in a correct way and how do I rotate um, certificates, keys, users, um, in an efficient and uh, cost-effective and manageable way on the long term, uh, like uh, I want to fire an employee or employee leaves, uh, how do I revoke his access to the VPN? Uh, that's the use case where I want to um, uh, to configure uh, WireGuard. Um, 
it's it that's the, the i think the, the beautiful part is that this is an example of um a uh, a client and a server um configuration so that's all you need to configure and um the only command which you need is this uh, wg quick which is basically a bash script which wraps um wireguard uh wireguard has become probably um the it's been merged upstream in the kernel so right now it's a kernel module and up until 5. Kernel 5.5 .5 was an external module that you had to install. Uh, now in 5.6, it's uh, merging to the kernel upstream. So if you have a system which runs 5.6, uh, you have WireGuard installed. You may need to still install the client, uh, but that's a whole other story. Um, uh, that's another thing that where we talk about WireGuard, there is a little bit explanation that we have to do because um, WireGuard is more uh, behaves more like a, a overlay network rather than a classic traditional uh, client server VPN, which we are used to. Where we talk about VP, usually when traditional VPNs is that I have a server, which basically is a gateway to my infrastructure to the public internet. And what I do is that I establish a, a, a connection to it from my laptop or, uh, or desktop. Um, where WireGuard, uh, at least uh, the core of it, it's more uh, I, I, there's a more idea of uh, a mesh so I can create a, an overlay network of like I have machines which I don't trust the network underlay uh, I can install WireGuard and these machines now they communicate over a encrypted network um, but right now the plugin that we want to create is the client server which is just basically using a subset of features of WireGuard of more like uh, configuring all of the host in a different way. So we're going to have server host and client host. Um, Which is similar to what Tailscale is doing with uh, their centralized configuration server. So that part is the hard part, uh, the configuration and key management part. Yes. Again, yeah, also, this is also like, because also because you have to keep in sync like all the peers yeah. in the network. So if you spin up a new servers, it has to be distributed across all the others. Otherwise, they won't be able to communicate. So this distribution yeah. in a like distributed fashion way or in cloud or with, in Kubernetes can be hard because yeah, it has to be managed. yeah, yeah. This is one of the uh, um, this is one of the complications when we want to create this plugin is that. Exactly when I create a new client, so I create a new user joins the company or a new user uh, wants to have a, I have to reconfigure the server basically to allow the user to be in. Um, while if I want to do the same thing for OpenVPN, for example, I can have a PKI and just I create a new certificate and I don't have to configure anything on the backend side when I add a new certificate. Um, okay, so um, I want to be a little bit of architecture, how basically this is going to work. Uh, I cannot draw, so I'm just going to use this. Uh, so we're going to have uh, our Vault server deployed somewhere uh, that's needed. And basically, my architecture is going to be a, a WireGuard uh, server. And uh, all of this is going to be basically, we're going to have the, uh, this is going to be our basically public internet. And, um, and below that, is going to be our private infrastructure. So what our users is going to uh, is going to do it basically um, the idea is that is going to go to Vault, is going to get back a, a a configuration, and with that configuration is going to go and um, access basically our WireGuard server. That's the that's so Vault. The, so the plugin will be also in charge of configuring the, the WireGuard server to accept connections. So in, on the, the idea client. is that um, WireGuard server will need to basically, uh, also that's one of the reasons we're using Bolt is that um, is WireGuard server will need to pull. Uh, to pull. And uh, I have an idea how to optimize that um, mm -hmm. with a webhook. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's an optimization that we can uh, discuss later. Is that anyway, yeah, yes, <laughs> sorry? In roadmap, <laughs> yes, a roadmap, public roadmap. Um, <laughs> so the idea is that yes, we're going to have a WireGuard server is going to need to be able to connect to uh, to Vault. Uh, maybe that connection is going to be on the private side. That would be much better, like something like this. So we have the 
public internet and uh and some people maybe maybe like say oh you're crazy you should not expose um uh, vault publicly and i sort of agree for most applications so in this case um if someone was like okay we want to deploy this in our infrastructure this is super production already obviously because it doesn't exist yet um well maybe for your you basically you can deploy a vault dedicated to running this plugin Mm -hmm. So for to managing your uh, VPN infrastructure, so you have your vault internal vault deployment, which you use to um, to run your applications to, for mm -hmm. secrets, and then you have your vault dedicated to VPN. So if it's compromised or if it, they found a bug or it's uh, just dedicated to VPN, there's not nothing else running on it. Um, so this is the idea. Um, okay, uh, if everybody's uh, clear on it, uh, yeah. let's discuss. Yeah more about how actually this works um and i want to uh just i don't know how familiar uh, you are with how a plugin how it basically a backend works in in vault is that uh, again as i said we're gonna have paths and uh, basically the the way that uh, is very important like keyword in the also in the development because that i'm um, gonna open like a sample uh this is a in one of the newest uh, addition uh, it's an LDAP, open LDAP uh, secret management, which uh, Vault can create users in open LDAP. Um, doesn't I don't I know why it doesn't uh, it's not connected to open LDAP. It's just that the configuration and the structure of this plugin is very similar to what we want. Um, so basically, because um, I only need a couple paths to configure WireGuard, and by paths I mean endpoints. Um, so basically, what I want is that I want a config endpoint. Where I can configure basically my server, which like what is the public IP of my server, um, what is the DNS server, what's the maybe like how often do I want to refresh or some um, configuration which are general. So we're building a plugin which handles one um, one WireGuard server. If you want to deploy um, more WireGuard servers, you can instantiate this plugin multiple times in your Vault inst instance. Uh, I don't think it's it's useful to create uh, all this abstraction over top, which bolts and those already to handle multiple WireGuard servers on one plugin. Um, so we want to have one path for config, which is going to handle basically all of the big management of the server. So w w something that is a one-off configuration is going to go into the config and we have parameters, right? So in this case, these are parameters specifically to open LDAP but we're going to have parameters specifically to um to uh wireguard as an example these are uh two configurations one for the server and one for the client these are wireguard configurations and basically here we have the, all of these parameters um which are one offs uh well one server we have one um one script here so all of these parameters can be slash config and I configure which port does the server listen on, which port um, here there is no, but there's uh, also a DNS configuration, which you can specify. Um, yeah. And there, so all of this, uh, which is like the gateway uh, or this uh, CRDR of the of the server, all of these configuration are one offs and um, can be configured into the config endpoint. Um, then basically we want to define something called that uh, uh, this is something used uh, in um, involved very much is a concept of, of a role um, a role is basically the abstraction over a, a given account, a given client so a given client can have multiple permissions so no, not all clients are the same and uh, we want to be able to specify which clients have different permission in this case um, go back here we have a client configuration. In this case, we have a oh here the DNS, uh, and we have a, a this is a client IP, um, and basically these are just generated by the these are for the server configuration. So or even this, um, maybe some client have a slash thirty two. That means that can they cannot this configuration basically just means that they cannot communicate to other WireGuard clients, um, so they can only talk to the server and this dns so let's say i can create a role which has this configuration so i have i can create a role which specify that a new client with that role can only have a slash 32 um 
endpoint at, and as a given uh, DNS configuration. Like, let's say I want to create mm -hmm. an admin role, which has a slash 24, so I can talk to all of the, I mean, it's very insecure, but that's, it's, yeah, there's possibilities in the future where, um, or even a given endpoint, maybe I want to configure uh, some roles which talk to the private or to the uh, server public endpoint and some roles we can communicate to a different uh, endpoint of the server. Um, or even these allowed IPs, these are which uh, IPs are uh, routed through the server. So um, most yes. clients will only need, uh, like this is, a, this is a configuration that basically will route all of your okay. traffic through uh, the server. And uh, this is maybe not wanted for all the clients. Most clients are going to be basically needing uh, something like a 10 slash eight or even yeah. smaller subnet. Because like, if we are thinking this is a more of a, a company based VPN, I don't want all of my employees to route everything through the, through the, through my VPN. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's very, very bad. Yeah, let's say and that zero, 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 it's a usual configuration for classical VPN, uh, secure uh, VPN uh, to reach some the internet from your coffee shop uh, in Amsterdam with your Wi-Fi. Rip Kubicon. <laughs> yes, if you don't trust your Wi-Fi of your hotel or um, or your coffee place, that's a very good configuration. But if you if you're running a company and you don't want this, so this is a these are configuration where um, and this uh, can be configured here. So here. They call it static role. I don't know what LDAP means for that. I don't care. Um, we can create a role, and these are parameters. So in this case, they configure the end, the rotation period, username. We can configure basically our parameters are going, are going to be allowed IPs or DNS and basically address. Or like it's not going to be the address itself because the address is going to be generated on the spot. The more will be like this uh, subnet mask uh, for that type of clients. Um, so at this point, uh, let's create a readme because I'm going to forget all of this. So um, yeah, we have a couple of like, we have a couple of viewers, uh, and just a notice if you if you want to interact with us, I'm looking at the chat uh, on Twitch. It's not if you're coming from the from the website, you don't see the chat, but if you go on Twitch, you can write. So there are a bunch of people there, and yeah, just join there. So, um, awesome. Please ask questions. Um, I'm just going off uh, with what I think is good, but no, I have no idea. Um, so, so, okay. so configs yeah. for general config of a server. So, yep. so this is going to be whatever. basically the, what we said. It's something like the port. Yeah. Port Public endpoint, um, um, like the refresh, refresh, yeah, client refresh, refresh period, and any anything we come. Uh, let's say, yeah, uh, post say, up, post down, big post. Up uh, script and post down script. Awesome. I think I forgot anything. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the server. other part. Server. Yeah, the other part can be. Okay. Yeah, the seeder can be configured, but the other is I don't know if it's something. No, this is uh, like one off. This is one off. Uh, I think it's. Yeah, it's either yeah, the, the, yeah. We either configure this, this a is slash twenty four. Yeah, the fact that it's a slash twenty four, it's okay to, to have it configurable. But I guess that the address it's not yeah. of use. Uh, it's either we do uh, this basically. It's either we do. We are handling it. all the addresses, so it's yeah. Or, or we can do something like this, where we can have a gateway IP gateway IP in which we expect something to be written like this. And then we have uh, like subnet mask. And then we expect just the 24 here. Uh, it doesn't really. Yeah. yeah. 
to me, I prefer this. The first one is sucks, I think. Um, yeah, it's more constant. And we have Go packages which can handle this uh, notation, so we don't need to do yeah. magic things on our side. Um, so in the role, instead, which parameters are going to be needed are, uh, as we said, um, is going to be allowed IPs, configuration, um, DNS configuration, and I think it's going to be a subnet client subnet mask. I don't know. I don't know the. I don't know what. Like I know subnet. Yeah. Um, so which this is going to be most times is going to be 32. And it's, if you want to change it, it's going to be very kind of dangerous, um, but it's going to be okay. Um, awesome. Uh, now that we have configured kind of most of things, what's the next thing, the next thing? We want to actually have an endpoint where people can actually get their configuration because all of this is fine. This is all, these are all configuration for um, for the administrator, right? The administrator that creates the server and all that, all of this. But now we want to actually create a configuration which um, gets credentials. So in this case, I'm not sure that. Yeah. So this is a creds. Um, this is the OpenLDAP uses static creds with the default. So when you use the uh, AWS, even the AWS um, is going to be creds. So basically, the creds is that it's a read endpoint where you do uh, slash wireguard slash creds slash the role name, uh, which in this mm -hmm. case maybe can be like common or something like generic or developers, let's say, or something like that. And uh, it give, basically gives you back the the password or the, in, the, in our case, um, the client configuration, the configuration, which holds the, um, which basically is going to, uh, we expect something like this to be, uh, come, to come back. So in this case, we're going to have a slash creds and the name. And Isn't we don't it easier for for a back uh, to have like roles slash name slash creds, so that you can. This is going to expect the, the, their, this is going to expect uh, their role name. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I was meaning just um, yeah no uh, yeah that just uh, the path roles role name slash creds. Instead of it's easier for uh, like uh, airbag and the configuration of uh, vault at least. Um, I don't want to to change your uh, your plan. No, no. Uh, this is more of any, like not the, but, yeah. Um, no, it's, this is more like what all of the. I'm I'm not I'm not an expert and uh, I'm just copying basically what most plugins are doing. Um, yeah. Uh, something I usually look at is the AWS one. Uh, it's probably uh, it's, it's super used. So the okay. so the more like these endpoints are configured by the people that write these plugins. So the more endpoints, the hard, the more complicated and convoluted this is going to be. And uh, so you have AWS config. So that's they have more paths uh, after config because they have more things to configure. Mm -hmm. But they also have the creds and they have a cred dash name. Uh, which is something Fine. that, uh, and, that we have, and we have the roles. Uh, so basically, we are copying the AWS one, which I think it's a good pattern. Um, I'm not sure how that is going to translate, but um, in this case, we don't pass any parameters to the creds. Um, mm -hmm. And what I can imagine, so we're going to basically have a client.hcl. So I want to imagine writing it as, as you as you mentioned, air back. So what um, what a client configuration like uh, can look like. I have no, I have bad memory for the syntax. So I'm just gonna copy this. Um, what is going to look like is going to be wireguard slash creds slash developer, because I, I imagine that I create a role called developer and I give this a read capability. It means that uh, if someone is associated with the client policy, and I can uh, basically apply apply policy and shell. I can basically do vault policy right client. Oh, let's call it wire guard client, and then I can do client 
HCL. I'm 95% sure that this is the right syntax, but I have no idea if that's actually. Um, so if someone is get, um, gets uh, associated with the WireGuard client uh, policy, can uh, basically only do get the credentials for the role developer. Um, and in this case, uh, yeah, I've, I've done bad naming, but because this is not just a wider client generic, it's going to be developer, right? Because in case I can have a, another um, policy for administrators or another policy for um, a, getting a different role for the client, for different client role. Um, but we're still missing one one path, uh, which is um, which is the server. Uh, the WireGuard server is going to basically for like this is an example of a client. So for every client that we create, this is the inter this is basically the part that is dedicated to the client itself. Um, so for every of this that we create, we need to basically add one of these peer to the server. So basically, we need a um, a, a se separate path which generates this um this configuration and uh, it reloads every time so every time that we add a new client this configuration is going to be different and um something i was thinking is more about uh it's a static endpoint secret sorry server creds and this is no, there is no role name here um and this is a, probably a first iteration um mm -hmm. where we want to have different um a separate, uh, more configurable. If we want to do more of a mesh structure, as we described before, of the of WireGuard. But in this case, my use case is very for a company or for something like that, to where I can distribute clients to a single server to uh, to use as either a privacy-oriented uh, VPN or a company uh, private inter private uh, infrastructure VPN style. And this again, I don't. Want, there is no. Um, this is going to be a get, uh, or this is important, and this can be get, post, and delete endpoint. So these are the kind of like um, mm -hmm. uh, again, this is the same thing, the same yeah, the same methods uh, that this client. So these are only read. Um, and again, for this is the client HCL. So in case I want to do. Uh, I want to configure my AC2 instance, right, uh, to be a server. I can associate that uh, AWS IAM role to a server policy. Um, how, how is WireGuard server going to load its configuration? Server runs. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, probably, we, there is, there are a couple of ways. I think that, that because of this needs to be reloaded every time that a new client gets. Basically, we need a, a super small web server, which can, the, that's my idea. Either we do polling from the server, yeah. basically we configure something like a, a yeah, cron job or uh, like yeah. a Go server, a Go, um, and a, a Go, very small Go um, binary, which polls every 10 seconds or 15 or 20 seconds and uh, get if there is some uh, some changes in the configuration. Um, mm -hmm. My idea here, um, was uh, yeah, I no, about this, I, time, and I, this is highly highly uh, inefficient. Which my idea would be to have a webhook address configuration and a webhook webhook secret. Um, I forgot one, which is basically just the uh, the binary. So uh, I imagine the the uh, like I showed in this uh, diagram, this can be in private. So the idea is that the whole server when a new client is configured, calls a, um, a, a webhook on the WireGuard. It doesn't, it, I don't want this to transfer any information. It just tells the WireGuard, the binary configuration of, uh, of uh, WireGuard to go and pull the new configuration. Um, it's just uh, a, yeah, yeah, just yeah. a trigger, just, just a trigger, an interrupt, uh, like you want to call it, I don't, it doesn't matter, to tell the WireGuard server to, now it's time to pull. So, because this is like, a, I don't imagine this like at the beginning when you deploy the server is going to be a lot of configuration at the same time, but after a couple a couple hours, then you imagine all of your clients are your um, and requests on the on Vault are kind of expensive uh, because mm -hmm. Vault has all of the uh, backend is encrypted. So every time if you want to do every time you go and ask for all of this is going to 
do a lot of um, calculation and a lot of uh, requests on the backend of storage backend. So um, the, this is the basic idea. So we can have a, something. We, we have a suggestion from the chat about the use of console template. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, but the, the yeah. thing that, that would be very good is that I don't know of a, you can configure a command to trigger after um uh, after the mm -hmm. fact that you basically you like after we pull this from vault we need to tell the wireguard interface the wireguard module to reload its interfaces with new clients i don't know of any configuration that you can say it, uh, uh, gets when something has changed or listen for a webhook of something change i don't know maybe it's uh it's a configuration i not that not one i've, I've known what Console, yeah. Uh, console template. I'm checking also. Trigger. Uh, yeah, I will let you. I'll let you uh, search in offline. So yeah, that, definitely. If I have to think about like this, yeah. this problem template console template looks like possible. Yeah, yeah. as I say, we will figure it out. But yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that that was my idea. The first idea, and also um, now we don't even need console template most of the times. Um, for the fact that um, using Vault is that the the Vault agent, which is uh, in the same binary as Vault. So basically, when you sp when you download the Vault uh, binary, you get the server, the agent, and also the CLI all in the same um, all in the same binary, which is great. And they integrated the a templating engine, which is just a binary of the, the console template into it. So and that would be super useful to generate this the first time. The problem is that I don't know of any trigger of like when this is changed. There is no real. I don't know of any any configuration even for oh. setting this on a schedule. Uh, but if there is, then it's amazing because we don't need to write another binary, which is great. Again, um, my so doubt about I, about uh, console template is does it work with something else with respect to a uh, key value store? I never no, no, there, there, there's, al else. there's already there's already integration with vault specifically with vault yeah um, okay with vault yes but all only the key value store yeah no it I'm doesn't sure. really, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter with what what you, okay it's you can pass the, whatever yeah. path and yeah. it will work okay. yeah okay. it's just a read uh read and put uh request um because the documentation we were referring directly to the key value store and i always use the, the key value yeah. store so i was no, no, makes sense um vulcan vault template can console template or vault agent with the templating engine can be also used for mm -hmm. uh, kpi uh, pki to manage certificates with it um so it doesn't really matter which backends you want but it in this case um it's more about the triggering of like when something needs to be reloaded um and the command is very useful feature because after basically we download this, we need to do widget, uh, WG quick save on the server mm -hmm. to basically, um, update the server with all of the new clients. Um, okay, I think this is the structure that um, is going to, to be needed at first, at least this is like super niche. I'm sure that once this used, there's much more configuration but this is not about that yeah i mean it's I think, been half an hour of rambling so let's make yeah. some code yes <laughs> let's let's write some code um just uh so to write this uh, we're going to use some libraries because i don't want to write this from scratch i just want to uh show a couple things that we're going to very useful that people wrote and we don't need to um so this is a vg quick go basically this is going to be used on the server side if we, once i have the um uh, once I have the configuration, I want to apply it to the server so I can use this binary. I can integrate that. Um, the widget types, this is the uh, this is the actual SDK for WireGuard, the official SDK wire for Go. And this is going to be very useful because in the, in the vault, in vault, I want to generate private keys and, um, and also uh, pre-share keys. Um, that's no need. Uh, so this is very useful. So I don't have to uh, do all of this magic cryptography again I don't I don't trust myself doing it uh, one other thing is that um, something a feature that's very it's, I think on my side is missing and if it's for a good reason from security I don't know um, it's a, basically it's a, a DHCP server when you install when you use um, open VPN you and you connect to the server you get assigned uh, a an IP for yourself 
uh, there's a DHCP basically implementation there. WireGuard doesn't have one. So we need to do basically a DHCP, we need to, our plugin needs to have some sort of DHCP um, or at least assigning an IP to a client. So this, uh, I found this library, this package is in the Kubernetes. Um, I found it like deep, very deep and, um, mm -hmm. And basically, that's exactly what just exactly what we need. So I just need the uh, basically any uh, the API is very simple. So I just need the uh, subnet and the gateway, and uh, allocate that. Uh, I can occupy nice. the ones that I already have. So I have like a list of the clients I already have. I can occupy all of those, and then I can just allocate next. And once the client gets uh, expires, I can release that um, from this. So I glorify the linked list. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I can re-implement this. I don't want to. And in no, the very, no. since this is a very, um, this uh, when you're dealing with packages and Kubernetes packages, this is awful uh, in general. So mm -hmm. something I did since this is, uh, I looked into it and this is basically a file. So I, what I did in the very spirit of Go is, I, <laughs> no, uh, Cidre, yeah, uh, copy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Cedar set. Vendoring it more. <laughs> um, Cedar set and um, Cedar set. Let go, and I just copy this. Um, it's like 200 lines of code. I don't want to import anything. I just uh, for the mo for this. I think it's it's awesome that we can just copy this. Um, okay. So how do we? What's the all the bootstrap things that we need to do? Um, so um, a plugin can be used in itself, oh. and it's basically both a library and a, a binary. Um, the, there's the naming, which is bold plugin secret and WireGuard. WireGuard. Um, and this uh, is not something I made up. Uh, oh, also, I'm just using the default uh, structure of a plugin. Um, and if you go into the AshiCorp GitHub um, organization, you can find this as a, a default. Um, I'm copying something I did a couple of days ago um, when I wrote another plugin. In this case, I don't. I can just change it to WireGuard. Uh, this is just. I, can, I initially copied from OpenLDAP. In this case, I can just copy from WireGuard. Um, so this is Bootstrap. This is all of the. Uh, AshiCorp Vault SDK and to make sure that this is actually a plugin which uh, works. And uh, what we instantiate here is a factory of a backend. Um, so again, here uh, going to the this is uh, the CMD. This is used when you want to actually compile the plugin uh, to run as a separate plugin. Uh, the how do you install a plugin into Vault? Still a hmm. pretty messy. Business, I would say. I would say. I think I've used a very politically correct way of that. I think it can be very harsh, but still painful. Um, yeah, still very painful. Yes. So I can create a package, WireGuard, um, which is uh, so. The first thing that we need to instantiate it's a backend, uh, which handles all of this registration of paths. Uh, and configuration and dealing with some um, the secrets. Um, I'm pasting some code which I uh, already uh, uh, for the InfluxDB backend, which I was trying to build. But as you see, there is not much things which are specific to to uh, to Influx at this point. Um, in this case, uh, I've, this is the uh, Kind of paths which I want to register, and these are functions, right? So the path roles, path config. In this case, let's order them just because I'm crazy. So let's path configs, and the, I, I can I will going to um, write a function which yeah, will I'm handle. Gonna share, I'm just gonna share a note that come from the chat, and I leave there. When you copy a file from a dependency, take the take the license with the file. So just that yes, you can do I, it. Uh, with with almost all, a lot of the like licenses we use in open source, yes, I think you I are allowed, you are allowed to do it. You just have to copy and paste. I did. I uh, copy. I think I, this is, I, I think that's what I did. I think that's yeah, what that's, I wrote that was needed. This part on yeah. the top. Yeah. That's um, 
So, and yeah. it's also a good idea to, to you know to, to paste the link where the the copy paste yeah. come from. So yes, absolutely. That's, it. This That's is, the best you can um, do. I I tried this and it's like yes, it's it's not good. It's not the best thing, but I think it's the best thing right now. It's not the most. Uh, um, so in this guy going again, coming back here, um, I have. Uh, declare a couple of functions which are path config this is a function which we're going to, is going to handle the config path um the path rolls the path creds and the rotate route is not needed in this case uh but something that we need is the path uh server creds these are the four path uh, path that we are going to be needing and um handlers yeah. let's say and the yes. usual handlers yeah. yes yeah, exactly. Um, and the, yes, um, and the, and this is the list of path in this backend configuration, and this is the list of secrets. So a definition of a secret is that uh, it's the basically again the, the thing I said before is that we want to let Vault handles or not Vault maybe itself as a as a server, but the all of the Vault integrations and libraries that we wrote. To handle all of the expiration of and revocation and rotation of all of these secrets, so um, this is going to be a secret uh, client configuration, and th what this allows us is to define a, a frame. Uh, this is a framework secret, and um, the mm -hmm. wire guard, wire guard. Managing a so I know that the when I when I write wireguard there's like a TM or register uh, something that I need to add but I don't know about this yet I don't know what the right and it's a registered trademark so I'm not um, is it is it really I, I think it is um, so the the good thing is that here I can specify which fields. Are going to be in this uh, in this path, and then I can just say config uh, or conf for short, mm -hmm. and so this is going to end basically be just a string. Uh, I know maybe like, again this is not the perfect ideal world of like objects, but I want to be the client to be as stupid as possible. I don't want them to be able to handle um, again to make this easy. Uh, I want them to just get something from Vault which is already ready to uh, to apply on on a client, and I want them to need to parse this into actually a conformant uh, string uh, conf um, init file or toml. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's the format actually. I think it's a init or toml. Um, and again, as, uh, that's the, the, these, the two function here are the best ones because that's what uh, allows me to basically write a fun an handler again, and I don't need to care when these handlers are run. Uh, and Vault is going to take care of running these handlers when the time has passed. So in this case, when you create a secret in Vault, the secret is going to be assigned a TTL and a max TTL. That means that um, basically when you create a secret against Vault, you're gonna basically ask Vault uh, for permission to use a secret. And this Vault is gonna say, yes, this is the secret and you can use it for this amount of time, let's say two weeks. Uh, but uh, it's also telling you uh, if you really, really want it, you can use the secret up to a month and a half. And but you need to be in charge of asking. Okay, um, after the two weeks, after ten days, uh, you as a client, you need to ask. Can you use it for? Uh, please extend my uh, lease of the of the secret. Uh, so up to two week, up to a month and a half. And and this is very good if we use Volt Agent or Constant Template because they will handle all of. The, sorry, not Constant Template. Exactly. Uh, Volt Agent. They will handle all of this. Like this is amazing features, but they are. Um, Something that you need to implement yourself, and we don't like to. I don't like to write code when it's not necessary. Uh, so we like Vault Agent to do this for us. Uh, at the same time, uh, how do I revoke this? I don't want to be in charge of keeping time and like this client has passed his uh, his TTL, so now I need to. I just want to write an handler that Vault will call when this uh, secret um, is going to like. Imagine. Uh, after two weeks, this is, uh, the idea of the TTL and the max TTL is that uh, even when dealing with con uh, more when dealing with containers, uh, these containers can go up and down when when they want, and there is no given uh, definition of like this is uh, uh, 
this is dead or this is alive. Uh, so I can keep a short TTL. So I can keep the secret for 24 hours. And if the pod is still alive for after 24 hours, they can ex extend his uh, use of the secret. But if he's not alive, then the secret expires after 24 hours. So I can have like even a very long max TTL. So the secret can be extended a long time, maybe even two weeks, but the regular secret is only created for valid for 24 hours. Um, so in this case, I can just write two functions, which are, uh, to, 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 I copied them somewhere, um, somewhere else. Uh, I think we can um, we can implement them later. Um, let's write yeah. some. Uh, but this is like the idea is that when you define a backend, you define the path and you define secrets. Um, now we need to define basically a, a config, uh, a config path. So the this again is. Not something that I thought about is the whatever the standard, yeah. The stand, yes, the standard. Um, so you you create a a backend or go which handles all of your backend, and you create a path underscore the name of the path. So in this case, uh, we can already create path underscore creds dot go package wire guard, and we can create a path underscore server threads.go and we can create a bad underscore uh, roles.go. Um, so yes, um, and what actually is in this, like all of these things. So um, not, not needed this. Um, again, if we look at the import, uh, there is a lot of Vault specific logic, and that's good because all of the things that Vault takes care of it, I don't have to. Um, and this is a, a framework that passes. So this is an object uh, from the framework of um, the, the package framework from Vault. And the same way I define a secret, I define a path. And what I define, the same way I define a, a, the fields in a secret, I define the fields, the parameters basically, which are this defined in a, in a path. So this is the pattern, is the config path. So in this case, it's um, we create a constant. Uh, so in this case, this path is going to, uh, when I register this um, object, um, this handler to the backend, it's going to respond to the config endpoint. And the fields, which I would define, so I can just go and open them on the side here. Um, I can go back, and now I can uh, I can define this. So this is a type string. Uh, this is a port on the guard That's server. So the port can be usually it's an int. Yeah. Yes, uh, it depends on, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, I can't remember the, the types no, no, it's, it's, available it's, it's, in the it's, framework. It's going, to be, it's going to be a type int, uh, is that when dealing with these things, I will, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's the, okay. um, Easy. yes, uh, because at the end, Vault talks, uh, like the, the main configuration, it's, um, when you store information and when you get information, you're going basically handling a map string of interface. Um, so that's going to be. Um, you you'll have to yeah. cast it. Yeah, uh, I mean we uh, the package which is very good, very useful is the map structure for. Uh, this is uh, the founder of mm -hmm. AshuCorp, um, which basically handles. It's very much like a JSON encoding, so you don't have to do anything. You just uh, so public endpoint. I'm just gonna copy this because I'm super lazy. Um, uh, address of the wireguard server. Uh, this client refresh period again. This is, should be a type int. Uh, yeah, let's do this. I mean, I, I think it maybe there is some you know pre-validation that they do. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't. They, yeah. you know, you're sure that it doesn't. You don't get yeah, I'm not. Want. I'm not even sure that this is a type int. Actually, it exists. Can you, uh, Philip? Can you check? Yeah, I'll check. Yeah. Um, That's how auto completion in, works in 2020. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, um, <laughs> yes, that's I have actually, it. On, I have it on Vim. I have auto completion <laughs> on Vim, so you uh, can have it on uh, on Visual Studio Code. <laughs> so this is a self config. It's a it's a boolean, um, and this configuration still have no really. Uh, I know exactly yeah, some, mm, but uh, yeah. Uh, copy this string. So again, these are all the parameters which are needed to configure. Uh, Post up script. Um, I don't know. I don't think there is a type URL. Maybe there is. Or type, type int. Type int is right. Type int is good. So and then we have a. I think you can leave strings uh, for that. Yeah, I'm gonna leave yeah, strings. It's, uh, you have type int, type string, type name string, type lowercase string, uh, type map, not, yeah. type bold. address, and, and uh, this is the last one. Or and the description, I'm gonna leave it for later. Uh, I mean, it's it's going to be needed, but I don't want to yeah. waste time now. Should just spend too much time blathering and talking. Um, so, and these are the operations. So um, in the path, the same way I described which handler uh, endpoint is going to be uh, used for and which parameters are going to be needed or supported, not let's say not needed. There is no, I, I've not, I'm not writing this is like required or nothing. This is a client logic that I need to write if uh, some of these are strictly needed or just I can accept as it's a default. How, uh, how, the, few... how the vault plugin system communicates with the with the parent, like the main vault via? Um, is gRPC communication? Okay. I think that's uh, that's it. Um, uh, yeah. The configuration again, as I, as and Philippe as a very real world experience on how to actually deploy a plugin into the system, uh, into a yeah, vault it's... system. Basically, you need to uh, put the binary that you compile into a specific directory in the vault, and um, you need to uh, instantiate the, the plugin. Uh, and, and then, the yeah, exactly. So when you, like, when you enable that plugin, you need to say, this is the plugin name, and this is the shell of the binary, shell 256. So, uh, and yeah, that's yeah. so funny. it's it's really funny to to handle upgrades because how do you do it? Uh, yeah, there is a <laughs> there is an enable uh, it, uh, there is a specific endpoint that you need to hit to enable an update. Uh, I found out that yeah. uh, Ashiconf last year. I didn't know about ah, it. Yet. Okay, but but again, that's very uh, subtle because when you're running containers, it's you need to do to run this exactly. in every single instance not just like on the on like if you're behind the reverse proxy not just saying containers if you're running vault uh, ha behind the reverse proxy and you you need to basically hit this endpoint on every instance um so that's again very very not fun um and that was best. our use <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was yeah. exactly our use yeah. case. and if you're if you're on vault i think uh, running in ha is very important um so uh, this is like something that I've, um, I've been battling with. And my idea is that if you run a plugin, if you want to like, really run a plugin and it's easy, it's probably even easier to just add it to your vault and to compile your own vault, um, to, to compile your own vault binary with the plugin installed into it, uh, embedded into it already. So it's a really, it's a tool. Uh, I try to add it my plugin and it's a two line change in the vault source code to add a plugin. Um, so uh, it's much easier to compare. I know it's like it's life good. Hack from real life. Absolutely <laughs> yes. This is like when the um, I can I can show that uh, uh, vault. I can show that uh, as in here and somewhere built-in plugins registry. So this is the list of plugins which are um, uh, which are handled. And if you want to add your own, that's what I did. Um, uh, I can add, uh, let's say, change this okay. to WireGuard, WireGuard, and WireGuard. And this logical WireGuard, okay. basically this is the definition of the plugin, goes into the list of, so there are three types of plugin that you can write. There's authentication plugin, database plugins, and a secrets uh, plugin, WireGuard, and logical WireGuard. And in this case, it's just going to basically have it installed by default. Um, sure. Uh, 
and that's it. So this is like, uh, as I said, it's a two line change, which is going to make your experience much, much better, but you have to basically uh, yeah, trust that better. you're going to um, compile Vault and run Vault and deploy that. Uh, in a container environment, it's, I think it's, it's quite easy to do that. Not sure about all of the um, more of uh, enterprise uh, compliance and all of that um, work, but from a from an operation operation sure validating the support. You yes, absolutely. Sure yes, if you're running enterprise, I please compile it. <laughs> yes, if you're running enterprise, I don't think you should do that uh, at all. As, at as all. we say, like it's a life hack from real life. So take yes. it easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. we are. Yeah, we are providing <laughs> something that works. Is not absolutely uh, uh, best practices or like it's best practice from an operational standpoint. Mm. Uh, going back to this, so we have defined all of the fields, uh, all of the parameters which can be passed to the uh, config. Now we need to basically address all of the get, post, and delete operations, right? So we have this is the operations. Uh, as they call it, operation handlers. So we define a create, uh, create, uh, sorry, a create operation, an update operation, read and delete. In our case, we define only three real functions handler. Um, in our case, the create and update are basically the same. Uh, just we're just going to overwrite um, everything, and uh, the read operation and the delete operation are separate. In this case, we create an operation and. Uh, here is that where we do validation of the fields that we receive. Um, in this case, um, this is an example. So I defined a public endpoint. I think a public endpoint field is required. I cannot uh, continue um, with my. I cannot continue with the configuration if a public endpoint is not defined, right? Um, you could, so you could have set, you could have set it as required in the field. Uh... There is, a, the is, there, is, uh, is there a required? Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. is there... In the field schema struct, there is a required, which is a bool, and you can. Required. And also, yeah. you can sort of, you can also set defaults if you want. Okay, awesome. So yes, let's do that. That's uh, it's de defaults. Uh, yeah, it's that. the default with all this. Awesome. That's and uh, it's an Okay, so I can so write whatever. whatever you want. Yeah. And this is an int, so I'm going to do the default port. I don't Which remember, is 58 uh, something. Yeah. Uh, I can no. Five, let me check what my server, server is. here. Yes, it's a 51820. Um, great, uh, client refresh period, like, like this default. Um, uh, it's mm. in the client. It's in the client configuration. It's twenty uh, persistent it's people I. Yeah, it's more of a persistent people I. Client persistent keep alive. Uh, this is used uh, because um, when traversing nets and your your uh, because of how this. Wireguard works. Um, yeah, it needs to keep a connection open if you are yeah. behind the net uh, in your private, uh, how, how traditional household. Uh, save config the default true. And because wireguard is not, is not continuously sending data, but it's uh, yeah. like quiet. It has been developed and started from uh, red teaming. Uh, let's say. Practices. Use case, so yeah, exactly. So it's mostly silent. If you are not using it, it's silent. So if you don't set a keep alive uh, and you are behind the nut, it can be. Also, these scripts are only basically the only variable which is um, very important is the is this one. It's um, it's the interface uh, which you use. So this is the, very depending on your distribution or Linux distribution that you're using. This can very be like it's zero. Um, and then is more Ubuntu side of, um, and I don't know, this is, can be server default. And it can be that. And there's a comma there. 
And for now, these are not needed. The webhook address, there is no default, and there's no like uh, the. But I think the default behavior here should be. I don't know why these are not uh, behaving. I think I forgot. Yes, yes. Um, the default behavior is that you're going to do polling uh, on the server, and this is an optimization. So if you don't want to configure it, don't don't, don't configure it. I'm not gonna stress about it. Um, so this uh, basically field data. So these are the function that's going to handle the write. So I receive the parameter field data, and I'm going to validate it. And it's, uh, if it fail validation, then um, so all of this basically are um, not really needed. That's the the beauty of it because I validate um, the only yeah I validate that the public endpoint actually exists uh, already. So I don't need all of this. I can, um, yeah, I once I know that it exists, um, I still need to parse it as a URL, as a URI, yeah. uh, just to make sure that actually is a valid, um, like that field just just is a string, it doesn't do any validation of that. Um, so I can validate that. And uh, now, uh, this is not, uh, it's not something that I, um, care about now basically the, the next thing you need to do it's to save this into vault so now uh, i get my configuration um i need a way to create this and to let's say vault save this for later right because then when i need to go and create things and also this phase we also want to create a to generate a server private and public keys um because those are going to be created once and uh, um they're not going to change um, and in this case, we're going to use a, a, a just create a, a configuration uh, abstract, um, which I already have. Yes, here. And it's defined down here. This one. And I can call it config very configuration. And this is the thing that I was describing before, which is the, uh, so this tells uh, map structure, uh, the package from Ashburp, how to uh, encode uh, into a hash map. Um, this is not needed. And basically, again, here is a lot of repetition of basically what I need to uh, copy from here. So I'm going to do the port and this is an int. And this is going to be encoded as port. It's not needed. It's not needed. Uh, private key is going to be a string. Public key is a string. Uh, DNS, it's not here needed. And um, public endpoint is going to be needed. So I've shared on Twitch uh, a link to the plugin upgrade path uh, from Ashikov. Awesome. So Luca Zecca was saying there is no best practice, which is uh, the one I worked on uh, the plugin back in the days. Mm -hmm. And now there is a page. Back then there was not. <laughs> um, so what uh, I call it, I changed the name. It's a persistent keep alive. Public endpoint, client, persistent, key, alive. Um, so this is going to go on and on, basically. Um, I want to see if this can be just write this and um, compile uh, the code. And that can be like our first iteration um, of this. Config map. Here we do the decode. Um, in this case, we don't care about this. And the thing here is that when we want to this, uh, this is used so that we don't encode this when we return this to the to the users because we don't want to return the user the private key. The idea is that vault is the only one which holds the creates and holds the private key other than the server. Um, Oh, uh, let's let's say we don't do any validation in this case because we don't care, and we can just do um, 
couple fields uh, port which we get from the and host I, I was thinking clients have to have their uh, their their private key so yeah no okay let's 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 handle mm -hmm. let's involve uh, handle the whole part of keys and stuff yeah that's better um yeah it, it, would, it would be a better implementation some way where the clients generate their own private key and they just and say, upload this my, yeah and upload no no they don't need to upload it they just need to upload the, pri the public key the private uh, public key. yeah sure. yeah so that can be like a separate path like uh, we can use creds for like the server generates everything and maybe let's say secure path or public uh, creds where the clients supply their own private key, which is a more secure approach um, because the, the private key never traverse the network basically um, as it shouldn't. Um, but yeah, it depends, case, uh, uh, it depends how much uh, smart you want the client to be. So if it has to generate the key and then upload it or uh, if it's just uh, uh, something pulling a config and it has to work. Exactly. Uh, so this is the, um, so basically the way we do this, it's, uh, I did it too much. Uh, I want to basically just compile this uh, so that we can, um, if, if it's, because I know it's already an hour. Make it run, so that's it. Interface. Mm -hmm. um, and basically this, uh, uh, I deleted the too much, definitely deleted too much, decoded. Um, oh no, in this case, I don't need that, sorry, my bad. Uh, I don't need to encode anything, I just say a config and um, I store it into vault. So this is the configuration where this configuration, uh, which more, with more, more parameters is going to be stored into vault. And this is, a, um, so we don't care how this, like that, that's a beautiful thing is that we only care about this config. This is like our client logic, our logic, like our business logic. And we don't know of this, like we only say put and, but Vault is going to be encrypted at rest and handle that. And uh, so this is going to be uh, safe to use uh, config. And this should be general purpose. It should not, and delete, yes, again. So um, let's see if this actually can compile. I remove from the backend, since I have not implemented the, these functions, I've removed those. And uh, so, yeah, uh, it should, I'm not gonna say that. Um, there's also a make file, which I just gonna file with a bunch of commands. Um, uh, again, it's a, it's a bit of a, um, and this is the only reference. And there's also a very useful script and uh, again, this is a bootstrap scripts and build the RSH. And this is basically, you can copy it from every, um, plugin, Vault plugin. Every pl yeah, every plugin, even the KV plugin is actually a separate uh, repo in the, um, yeah. So this should be oh, enabled. So they leverage the, their plugin system for almost everything. Right? Yes, yes. Even the all the new plugins are because this uh, it's very used, very. So you can do make install, which is just compiles my go find. Okay, yeah, go mod in it. That's very useful. Uh, go mod tidy. So it downloads a bunch of things and maybe it will work. Obviously, now network it's. Your problem. And there's also a confirm check, which needs to be there. Uh, go FMT check that is age. There's something that it's it's in the repository. I don't um, go more vendor and just be faster later on. 
and now it should be making store and this should just compile so yeah there is something uh cannot find package oh yeah that's the yep there's some old reference which i forgot to remove can load uh, oh yep my bad last place where I didn't check. What is the script? What are you running the script from? Oh, yeah, you can see that. Typos everywhere. Ah. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, it's a special, special kind of. Oh. That could be a way to avoid the trademark. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yes. well, I don't know. Well, we, make, well. we, we make our own. Um... <laughs> Wireguard with blackjack. And <laughs> yes. uh, it's taking more than I should. Is your uh, your machine like spinning up its hands? Mine usually with go go install it goes crazy. Okay, so there is no and now the the beautiful thing is that they basically uh, uh yeah change uh, mod scripts plus a uh, scripts. So they develop this the build, uh, which basically now it uh, checks everything, generates the thing that needs to be generating, creates Vault, the, sorry, deploys Vault, and runs the plugin into it. So we don't need to compile Vault with the plugin in it to run it. Uh, it spins up Vault, spins up the plugin, and registers the plugin. And so now we are ready, and Vault is already initialized um, and sealed, and unsealed, and we have a to token, a default token. So if we want to test this, I can just copy this so it's easier. Oh, it compiled. It compiled. It compiled. Yes, <laughs> so we can go. We can go home, happy uh, in a, in the next shell. So I have it. This running on my local host. Uh, the binary came up. I can uh, define this. I can export, export, export vault token equals root. And now if I do vault status, it's 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 alive. It's a one of four version. And if I do vault secrets list, which lists all of my secret engines, I have well, I have wired here running, right? Um, and I can also vault since it's doing validation vault um, write uh, wired config, and I can pass parameters. So um, public endpoint is equal to um let's call it vpn dot example example dot com and the port it's equal to 53. um invalid uri because it's not a uri actually because of my validation it sucks uh, awesome um but this is actually what is expected on the server so um Invalid UI, why? Yeah, because I, I, I did validation and I shouldn't have uh, done it because it's not expecting it. It's not a HTTP. Uh, that's what uh, a valid ah, okay. URI um, looks like. I this we just don't do it. And the way that since this is like the, again, I can stop it. Uh, Control C and I can speed up again. It's going to rebuild it, reattach it, and doing all of these things. Um, and in my other shell, again, I can a secret list, and it's already it's different because the assessor here yeah. it's it's different. The assessor is basically it's a uh, it's a unique ID where you mount a. That's why before the rotation of the upgrade, um, when you uh, disable this mount, uh, unmount and remount a, a, a path, a secret path, all of the 
all the storage is, is deleted. That's why when you had previously, when you didn't have a plugin and you had to remount this unmount and remount the plugin, all of the storage was lost. And that's like, um, so here now it's actually working and vault read uh, wire guard. By the way, if you, use, if you use URL.parse, that, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. So I can do this. Uh, awesome. Um, anyway, here I can see um, like defaults have not taken place. So I don't know. I'm not mm. sure what's what's happening here. But uh, I'll be, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's that makes sense because I have not. Um, the, so it's not it's not their fault. It's that it's my fault. I have not uh, create like added parameters to this uh, before storing into Vault. So there's no ah, okay. nothing to be nothing to be get from Vault. Um, so here it's just like I have a bunch of code running, which I have not like. There's nothing yet uh, related to wired. So I've not I've not nothing related to guard. It's just more about bootstrapping the yeah, itself exactly. and data to vault. Um, Did you already do vault path help wireguard from the chat? I don't know what vault. What, what's what's the not command? Yet. Path path dash help wireguard. Uh, yeah, it's all together. Path hash help without space. No, we didn't. We didn't. Uh, um, awesome. This is the this is the definition, which I uh, still has something old, but yeah, this is the code that's running here. Uh, so I can update it, and basically, this is going to be very helpful for people that want to understand how this works. And we can define this for all of the paths. So I should. Mm -hmm. This is a config um, so this is the the following but yes this is other this is the general backend but i think i can do wireguard config and i have different um help this is just going to be helpful where like safe config like these are the all the parameters so they're going to give me um, a description of all of the parameters which are going to be needed when i configure this so this is very like it's built-in documentation which is not even built in the client it's built into the server which is returned which is awesome it's very useful yeah. when dealing with this complicated work stuff. I um, think we want to close this for today or we want to keep going. Uh, like it's already an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot. So if you want to, yes. if you have a repo where you can push it, I yes. think I'm going to push it. And for, I think we, we had a couple of progress. people. Yeah, we had a couple of people like watching. So I, I think they will be happy to follow it. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, thank you for thank you for your time. It was great. I mean, I like one of the reasons about about why I asked the Giacomo and Philip to to come is because I was curious to try the Streamyard. This is the you, you see the logo in the in the <laughs> top corner. Uh, I'm not. I, I, I mean, I'm not. I don't work for for them. I just uh, spoke with a bunch of people that uh, told me that it was cool, and I attempt to do like streaming. With my poor pure connect uh, poor connection things a couple of days, and it didn't really work great. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it looks like it was good. Uh, so thank you for being my guinea pig today, and uh, for the audience that follow it. Um, yeah, I'm going to to paste a bunch of links and update with the recording of this the the, the blog post where you come from, hopefully. And that's it, Giacomo and Philip. Do you have any roadmap for us? Any idea? I think we're gonna still work on it. Uh, I think it's a it's yeah. a good start for it, and I think it makes sense to have this. Like uh, there are already solutions coming up with WireGuard as a backend. Like um, Philip said, one tight scale, uh, tight scale, yeah, tight scale. Uh, but more and more are going to come up uh, solutions. So I think this is going to be like a competitor to them, just an open source uh, solution. That's great. And yeah, from my perspective, I know that probably something from TyScale is going to be open source as well. So maybe we will see what yeah. we are doing there. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's very fun. In the past, I used WireGuard and Giacomo knows where it, where it got used. And I'm sure that mm -hmm. a, a solution like this will cause like 
like a fraction of the pain we have to keep all those applications in scenes. Uh, so yeah, as Chad says, Tiles K should be open source, and I think it will be, or it, it, it is already being open source, but we are learning how to write a Vault plugin that is already allowed. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Sharing the pain is it's really old, really helpful. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, 